In this video, you're going to learn the exact implementation of the insertion sort algorithm using Python. These are the exact same steps I use whenever I have to sort data. So if you're looking for an easy guide of sorting your data like a data scientist, keep watching. To be able to understand the theory behind insertion sort, please check out my previous video where we did this. So this is what our initial array looks like sorted using insertion sort algorithm. Today, we're actually going to start implementing the insertion sort algorithm using Python. In this exercise, I'm actually going to use the spider IDE that has the console incorporated because it's going to be easier for us to run the code once we have implemented it. Let's get started. If you remember the rules of insertion sort, we needed to go through an array. And in this array, each element needed to be compared to the elements on its left. So we're going to try to do that right now. And then we're going to take an example and see how our algorithm is going to sort that array. So let's take a look. We need to first create a function and we do that by def insertion sort we name it insertion sort and we're going to give it a list and let's call it my list to be more precise all right we created the function but the next step would be to traverse the array and take each element and compare it to the ones on its left for that we will need to use a for loop and start traversing the array from the second element of the list to the length of the list and why the second element of the list? Well, if you remember the rules of insertion sort is that we need to take each element and compare it to the elements on its left. So if we take the first element in the array, we have nothing to compare it with on its left. So it's pretty much useless to take the first element. So this is why we're going to start traversing the array from the second element in our list. So we're going to do this the following way for element in range. So we need to do that in range one, right? Because this is the second element we're talking about. So if we have, for example, an array of five elements, we have the indexes zero, one, two, three, four. That's five elements. And this is why we're saying for element in range one. So from element in range one to length of my list. All right, so now we're traversing the list itself. Let's see, what is the next step? We need to figure out which element is our current element. So we're going to create a new variable for that. And I'm just going to name it current um, element. And it's going to be my list of that particular element. This is made just so we don't go back and forth and figure out which element we're looking at right now. So this is just for us to know which element is our current element in the list that we're looking at and we're trying to compare to the elements on its left. So current element is my list of element and then I need to actually choose another variable. And that variable is going to be the one that compares the elements to its left. So let's call that J and that is going to be element minus one. All right, so now that we have all these variables into place, what we need to do is start traversing the array and move the elements bigger than our current element one step to the right. So we're going to do that by using a while loop. And we're going to do this in the following way. So while current element is smaller than the element on the J position. And remember that you always need to close your while loop. Otherwise, it's just going to go infinitely. So we're going to do that by putting the condition and J has to be bigger or equal to zero. This way, we know that we've reached the end of our array. So this is our condition. And while this condition, while this while condition is true, we are going to do the next step. So we're just going to basically swap them. The way we're going to swap them is like this. So my list 
of j plus 1, because we move it one step ahead, is going to be my list of j. And we're going to decrement j by 1. No? All right, there we go. And we decremented j by 1. All right, so this is what the while loop does. It checks whether the current element is smaller than the element on the sorted part of the array, one by one. So we did that by swapping them in case we found one that was smaller and we needed to stop the while loop at some point and we use the j is bigger or equal to zero and then we decrement the j. Okay, so while this condition is correct, our loop is going to go continuously. But in case our condition is not valid anymore, then we're going to have to do the following thing my list of j plus 1 is just going to be our current element. So here we went outside of the loop and we finished sorting. All right, so this was our insertion sort implementation. Let's check it out and see if we have... Let, let me save it first. Let's check it out and see how our um, algorithm sorts our elements. So I'm going to give it a list, my list, give me some elements. So 33, 21, 1, 2, 6, 9, 8, 12, and 16. All right, now let's see if my algorithm, now that we have our list, let's see if my algorithm is going to sort them. We're going to call our insertion sort. On my list. All right, so I called the insertion sort on my list because I called the function, so that's gonna actually do all this code, is gonna go through this entire code on my list. So this is how we called it. So insertion sort on my list, and now we're gonna print my list. Shall we run it and see how it works? There we go. So our code implemented insertion sort, you can see that our initial list here, 33, 21, 1, 2, 6, 9, 8, 12, and 16, after conducting the insertion sort algorithm has been sorted the following way. So as you can see, these elements were sorted relatively quickly and it will sort it that way up to 25 elements and then afterwards it will probably slow down as insertion sort is most efficient on short lists. All right, so this was it for today. Please let me know down in the comments which one of the following algorithms you would like to see coded next. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.